Hi, my name is Michael and I'm the lead developer for Shaken Fist. This video is a quick introduction tutorial on how to install Shaken Fist on your machine and then start your first virtual machine, or as we call them, instance. Uh, this video exists because a couple of people recently have asked me for tutorials and it seems efficient to record something uh, which is basically the tutorial I'd give one-on-one, -on -one, but that I can give to people who I can't sit next to in the real world. Uh, this video is definitely an experiment. I'm using uh, software that I just randomly downloaded that hopefully works reasonably, and the video and conferencing hardware that I already had. So hopefully it's an acceptable quality, um, and you know I'd be really open to feedback about what could improve. I'm also going to do this as a single piece to camera. I'm not going to do any retakes, I'm not going to do any editing, it's effectively what I'd do in the real world if you were sitting next to me. And that's going to mean it's warty. So I do apologise for any ums or ahs, but the reality is doing it this way is very efficient for me. And so hopefully this video will uh, service a market that, say, a blog post won't, and, you know, will be relatively efficient for all involved. But as I said before, I'm really open to feedback on whether or not this medium is helpful. So let's duck across to my little terminal screen. Now the first thing we need to do when we set up Shake and Fist is we need to go and fetch the Git repository. So because I live in Australia, where the internet isn't the fastest it could be, and because it's evening on a weekend, uh, my local network is actually quite busy with people doing streaming video. So this will take a little while, um, but it gives me a chance to explain that in this demo, I'm going to install the latest released version of Shaken Fist from PyPy, but I still need the Git repository because it's where the installer lives. We don't package that separately or anything like that. Uh, the installer is composed of a shell script that calls Ansible and a set of Ansible plays that should look relatively idiomatic to someone who's used Ansible before. Uh, the shell script wrapper is mostly about providing some simple safety checks and calculating some values for you and things like that. Uh, unfortunately, my network is a little bit slow, so please bear with me. Ah, uh, here we go. Cool. So we need to change into the install directory, which is deploy slash Ansible in the Shake and Fist repository. And now we're effectively ready to run the installer, but I'm actually fairly lazy. So what I do is I have these little helper shell scripts in a directory called SF deploys that help with the various installs that I regularly deal with. So in this case, this is my one for my local laptop. So here, cloud is localhost. This is a shorthand for a Terraform configuration for setting up the hardware for the cloud. The localhost one just uses the local machine, but there are, for instance, Google Cloud and AWS and OpenStack and bare metal Terraform definitions that do slightly more complicated things. Um, I just use this relatively default admin password. Uh, please don't hack me, okay, thanks. Um, and you need to specify a floating IP block. It is best if this is an IP block that is not in use on your network already, or you're going to have some really confusing routing. So it just so happens that this block is free on my home network. You can see here that uh, the release variable is commented out. That just means, hey man, use the currently released version from PyPy. If you were a developer and wanted to hack on Shake and Fist, you can use the name of any Git branch here. So it'd be git colon the name of my branch. And the installer will, for any of the client repositories, look for that branch name there as well. Uh, and if it exists, use it. If it doesn't, it'll just use master. I turn off kernel shared memory uh, because it doesn't really make sense in an environment without lots of repeated virtual machines, and because it actually consumes about a CPU core, scanning RAM, looking for duplicates. And I don't have that many cores on my laptop. Uh, on bigger servers, like the 48 core machines um, I do most of my work on, I would turn this on, because it's worth a core to save my, my RAM. Uh, there's a name for the deploy, Marvin's just the name of my laptop, uh, and then I turn off Gluster. You'll want to turn off Gluster because it's not actually released at the moment. In fact, these variables are ignored, so you don't even need to turn it off. Um, Gluster is a thing we're working on at the moment that might give us a nice shared block storage um, story. Some clouds call that volumes, but I still need to do some performance testing to see if the performance is good enough to be a thing that we release. Gluster is attractive, though, because it's extremely simple, unlike, uh, for example, Ceph or Swift. 
Uh, the other thing I should say at this point is that I'm using Ubuntu 2004. Uh, we support any Ubuntu after 2004. Specifically, 1804's version of Libvirt is a bit old uh, and takes a different um, domain configuration format. So 2004 or later, please. Uh, when we add Gluster support, we'll be adding Debian support there as well because Gluster's a bit neutered on um, Ubuntu. But uh, for now, Ubuntu is what we support. So anyway, I'm happy with these values here so I can kick off the installer. Before I do that though, I just want to show you the configuration of my networking on the machine. So it's a little bit complicated because it's my laptop and I have a Wi-Fi interface and a wired interface, but the Wi-Fi interface is actually turned off at the moment. I also have Docker installed and you can ignore that. There's no Docker in Shake and Fist. That's just there for other stuff that I do. Um, but I'm just showing you this as reference because I want to show you what sort of interfaces get created by Shake and Fist when it starts doing its thing. So now I can just run my little helper and this will in fact fail and we're going to pretend that this is deliberate and educational but it's a single take video and it very much wasn't. And the reason it should fail, oh, it's really interesting, it didn't. Sorry, the reason it should have failed is because it needs me to prompt for my sudo password. Ansible wants to become root. I've obviously run something as sudo recently enough that it's still caching my password. Um, if you get prompted with a sudo error here, it's because Ansible can't become root. And you just do a sudo ls and then run the installer again and you'll end up in the right place. Um, but we'll all pretend that that was really smooth and that I don't have to retake it because, like I said, this is going to be a single take video. Now, in my FOSDOM talk I did recently, I said don't install Shake and Fist on a machine you're fond of. To be honest, I'm quite fond of my laptop. The reality is I say that because I wouldn't want you to do it on a production machine right now, at least not without testing. Uh, Shake and Fist reconfigures syslog, it um, installs system packages, it installs things in the system pip, um, it installs Grafana and Prometheus and changes the kernel configuration by turning on and off KSM and things like that. Um, it turns out all of those things are actually relatively easy to undo if you regret them but you wouldn't want to do it on a production server without testing. Probably the most invasive thing that Shake and Fist does is it does create a bunch of network interfaces on the box, and I'll show you those in a minute. But again, they're actually relatively easy to remove if you don't like them. You can just you know, IP link Dell them. But if I show you now, so already we have some interfaces being created. Now in this case, um, let me just see what I'm looking for here. So this bridge is part of the routing structure for how traffic gets off virtual networks. And then this, uh, these interfaces here all relate to a virtual network that must be pre-existing. So if I go SF client, all right, I should explain how the client works first. Sorry, again, single take video. Um, authentication is done um, either via environment variables or um, a JSON file called shakenfist.json that can be in Etsy, SF, or in your home directory, um, or flags to the shakenfist command line client. Uh, what we do when we install is we just provide you with this little RC file that provides the relevant authentication details. Uh, so this part sets up command line completion. Uh, this is a bit of a red herring. It's just a tweak to make sure that the etcd command line client uh, is talking the right protocol version, which is the thing you'd only ever do as a developer. You probably shouldn't be talking directly to etcd. And then these three lines are the magic that set up auth. So we're set up to talk the, to the system namespace, which is kind of the root admin namespace. Uh, we have a password to that namespace and um, there can be more than one password to the namespace. So you could create a password per user and as users enter or exit your organization, you could add and remove them. Uh, we're gonna to talk to localhost and that could just be any of the hypervisors running Shake and Fist in your cluster. And I don't bother with SSL because it's localhost. Um, if you want to use SSL, you do some sort of front end SSL termination, hardware load balancers, Apache, Nginx, something like that. Shake and Fist itself doesn't know how to terminate SSL. But if we source that file so that we have some configuration set up, let's see if we do in fact have any network set up. We don't, so that's interesting. I'm not sure I can immediately explain why I have those extra interfaces, 
But that said, I'm going to keep rolling. Um, you should expect some warts with Shaken Fist at the moment. There's a reason that we're at version 0 0.4. But that said, I still think it's a relatively useful piece of software even now. So to create my instance, I need to create a virtual network. So uh, SF client network create. I'm a pretty exciting guy, so I'm going to call my network Michael. And you need to specify an IP block that the virtual network is going to use. In fact, 20 was our floating IP block, so we'll use 30. Um, and off it will go. Now here it's going to stay. For many of the objects in Shake and Fist, you get a state. Uh, the state of this network is initial, which means that Shake and Fist is still setting it up. If we uh, inspect the network again with its UUID, we'll see in the time it took me to explain to you that there was a state, uh, the network has been created. Now the other thing we need um, for this demo is an SSH key. Uh, lots of the cloud images know how to do a thing called cloud init, which is done via config drive in um, Shaken Fist. And that's how you pass in things like SSH keys for auth, and cloud init does things like will resize the cloud image to the size of the disk and things like that. It's pretty cool. Um, there are a few cloud images that have hard-coded passwords. Cirrus is the most obvious option, but I want to use Ubuntu for this image. So I'm going to, sorry, for this demo. So I'm going to have to pass through an SSH key. So let's just quickly make one. And I'm going to call this ID testing with no passphrase. And now finally, um, after 12 minutes of video, we can create our first instance. So instance create. Again, I'm going to call the instance Michael, because exciting guy. Uh, two CPUs, two gig of RAM. Uh, it needs a disk. Let's have a 20 gig disk, and we'll put Ubuntu on it. This is shorthand. Normally, this would be along the lines of 20 at and a URL to an image. But there's a shortcut language that for Ubuntu and Cirrus that lets me get away with this. Um, you can, in fact, specify uh, a version of Ubuntu here as well. But I'm just going to go with the latest nightly build of the most recent Ubuntu. It would be pretty easy to add um, shorthand for other distros, but the reality is I'm an Ubuntu guy and Cirrus is there for testing, uh, so we haven't done that thing yet, but there's no real barrier to doing it. We need to specify what network the um, instance is going to be on, which is this UUID from earlier. Uh, we need to pass in uh, the public key that we're going to use for SSH authentication. It will end up in the authorized keys file uh, for the default user, which is called Ubuntu. And then we should be good to go to create the instance. Now, uh, the SF client's going to block here for, it's configurable, but it's currently set to 30 seconds, and it's going to try and um, create the instance. If it can't create it in 30 seconds, it will hand me back something that says that it's half done. But if it is created, then, um, you know, we'll just get the results. Now, because this is a fresh install and there's nothing in the image cache, it's going to have to go and fetch the image. So this is going to take a few minutes because it's a 500 megabyte image, I think. So uh, there we go. Ah, yes, sorry. So after 30 seconds, it gives up and it just hands you back the current state of the image. So if we look here, um, it's in a pre-flight state. And we can, in fact, inspect further what's happening to the instance by asking for the instance events. Now this isn't going to render super great on a terminal this size, but there's a balance between font size and fitting this all in for a video like this. And so we can see here that Shaken Fist decided that it had to go and fetch the image and um, is now doing that thing. And if we were super patient, we can just do that thing over and over again, and eventually we'll end up with um, a completed uh, virtual machine fetch. What I might do, to be completely honest, is I'll pause the video here for a minute so that you don't have to sit here while I wait for a 500 meg download on my not particularly fast network, and then we'll um, come back once the download is finished. So hi, welcome back. Um, turns out I was a bit of a pessimist and that only took a couple of minutes, so let's have another look. If we look at the instance events again, you can see that 
we decided the image requires fetch and we decided that at 8.23 and 16 seconds. And then it decided that it had detected the console log at 8.25 and 37 seconds. So it only took a couple of minutes to boot, including fetching, you know, a 500 megabyte image, which is pretty good for my network. Um, you can see here some other interesting stuff, like, for example, it detected that there was a login prompt on the serial console. Um, that's used a lot in our CI system. Uh, I think there's other things we can build on top of that serial console monitoring. Like, for example, the instance did dump into the serial console the SSH host key. And so we can do things like validate that you're actually talking to the host you think you're talking to. Um, but that's a bit of a forward-looking statement. It's not built right now. But if we go back and show the instance, you can now see that we have um, a network interface attached and that the state is created. Now the network interface is important here because I want to SSH to this um, instance. Now I can't actually do that from the network on the laptop. The virtual network is off in a network namespace and detached from me. Um, and I can bridge through to it. So the way we do that is by assigning a floating IP to the virtual machine. So SF client instance, oh, sorry, interface float and the UUID of the interface. Now the UI here isn't the best. If we go back and we refresh our view of the um, instance, we can now see the IP that's been assigned, which is this floating IP here. So finally, after all that, um, if I could spell SSH, we can say I want to log in with the SSH key. Um, the user ID set up by the cloud image is called Ubuntu, um, and this IP address. Ah, I have apparently previously been assigned this IP address. Uh, so let's just clean that up, and we'll SSH again. So, yeah, looks like a host key to me. There's actually not a good way at the moment to verify, verify these host keys, apart from inspecting the serial console. So we'll just log in, and we're now inside the VM. There are a couple of things I probably should have talked about when I explained the network creation. By default, you get um, a DHCP server that will only respond to MAC addresses that Shaken Fist has assigned and you get um, a NAT gateway. So once I'm inside the instance, even without a floating IP, I can do things like fetch packages from the internet. You can turn both of those off, but they have reasonable defaults. But you know, I can now do a dist upgrade on my brand new VM, for example. Now there's lots of other things we could talk about in a video like this. Like, you know, how once I've set up the instance and I'm kind of emotionally attached to its state, I can take a snapshot so that next time I can start it from that state. Or how I can in fact get to the serial console output via the API. Uh, and we could talk about the auth scheme and um, the tagging metadata system we have and lots of stuff like that. But the whole point of this video is to be an intro to get you to the point where you're inside your first um, virtual machine. And I feel like this is a reasonable point to wrap up. So. Just at the end, look, like I said, this is an experiment. It's deliberately a little bit rough and warty. I said single take. In the end, I see sneakily paused in the middle, but you know, you get the basic idea. So I'm very interested in feedback about this is a if this is a meaningful use of my time and your time, and if these are useful. Uh, that can be a comment on the video. You can email me. Uh, you can you know tweet at me. Whatever works for you guys. But, you know, thanks for coming along on the ride, and thank you for being interested enough to get this far. Uh, you can find out more about Shaken Fist at shakenfist.com, and all of the source repo repositories are at github.com slash shakenfist. Thank you.